So, you have a movie for me? I am a collector! Australian legends! Funny segments! And go! What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI and we're going to have a look at Jimmy Carr's new stand-up special called His Dark Material. The synopsis says Jimmy Carr finds humour in the darkest of places in this stand-up special that features his dry, sardonic wit and some jokes he calls career enders. So that's quite the uh, introduction there for this one. Uh, the only other stand-up comedy special I've reacted to in full was Dave Chappelle's The Closer. I imagine some people watching this probably found my channel from that because that video did really well. If this one could do half as good as that, I'll be very happy. So thank you guys for coming back. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hit the like button. You know, all that shit. Um, let's check out Jimmy Carr, His Dark Material. There's a huge difference between doing a joke about a rape Oh no. I'm gonna have to edit this. I want this to be monetized, guys. I'm doing a rape. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just actually, before we really get into it, I love his style of humor. It's, I don't think they're puns, they're just very, like, mathematically connected kind of jokes. Just the, a great play on words every single time. He has a TV show, or had a TV show called Distraction. If you can go check out clips of that, I. Don't know if all of them will be on YouTube, there might be some, but go check out his TV show Distraction, because holy shit, was that show crazy. But, let's see what he has to say about COVID, shall we? And has anyone had the COVID-19? Yeah. Yeah. Quite love you, I've been avoiding it like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we overreacted to COVID-19? Yes. Yeah, a lot of the survivors think so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn. Who's not going to take the vaccine because they think it might be dangerous? Raise your hands. Now take that hand and slap yourself in the fucking face. Oh, boy. Ah, he's, he's picking a side. He's picking a side. All right, that's fine. We've just had a massive COVID outbreak, <laughs> like today, <laughs> where I'm living. And I've actually lost a family member to COVID as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's serious business, but... Jimmy Carr's funny as hell, so I'm laughing. COVID's not even real. It's all been a hoax. It's a conspiracy. I tell you who's going to feel like fools. All the people that died of it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to dig them up and tell them, aren't we? <laughs> Come on, you. Get out of there. <laughs> it's not even real. You died of it. <laughs> you idiot. Get out. <laughs> Oh, he has a weird We're laugh though, I will say. My girlfriend had us on a diet where there was a cheat day, which I thought was great. Uh oh. <laughs> who, do you, <laughs> who do you have sex with? Turns out a cheat day is not what I thought it was at all. <laughs> she came home all excited. I ate pizza. I ate pussy. I thought it was what we're doing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I worry if I do fat jokes, I'll never reach a wider audience. <laughs> well, if you're fat and you're offended, be the bigger person. <laughs> Any vegans in? Is anyone here vegan? No, oh, here oh, we is go. There one there? What's your name? What's your, where's Ben? Give us a wave. Hi, Ben. Because people get confused, don't they? Vegan, vegetarian, what does it all mean? Well, if you're vegan, Ben, it means you're boring to talk to. <laughs> oh, the vegans, they won't kill anything other than a fucking conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I have met some vegans that were actually quite cool and chilled out and informative and nice, so, um, but I know exactly the kind of people that he's talking about there. Who here drives? Do we all drive? Yeah. Okay, check out my dash cam Australia videos. Come across a guy doing barely 10 miles an hour. So what do you do in that scenario? Flash the lights, toot the horn, and this is what I was dealing with. He had one of those novelty license plates. Beloved mum in flowers. <laughs> Frick, <laughs> um, am I right? Frick. Procession there, uh, <laughs> I need an attractive young woman for this next bit. You, you madam, can you see anyone? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're an attractive young woman. I imagine you're a stranger to a man thumbing in a softy. <laughs> I actually don't look at porn anymore. I don't look at internet pornography. Not a big moral thing on my part, I just choose not to because I recently finished it. <laughs> <laughs> but 
many hours in you can get there. <laughs> I was in a pornographic film. Hey, good on this was years ago when, uh, when I was a kid. <laughs> Mansplaining, if you're not aware, it's when a man tries to explain what you already know in a patronising manner. <laughs> it's when a man, it's me, <laughs> tries to put clever, clever thoughts into your pretty little brain. Oh, man. Do you understand that? That hurts when you smile at you're not meant to say dwarf anymore, you're meant to say little people. But I don't like the term little people one bit. Because little, a bit patronising. And people, come on, that's a stretch. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dwarfism is a growing problem. <laughs> I had a dwarf come up to me after a show. Well, not right up to me, up to about there. <laughs> Stop. He wasn't angry, but he was a little short with me. <laughs> He was not happy. <laughs> oh. oh my god. An angry dwarf. It's no laughing matter, really. I had a friend that was a dwarf who died last year. He actually took his own life. Yeah. Committed suicide. Um, what did he do? Jumped off a curb. <laughs> 17, you got a girlfriend. What, what is it still fingers or are you using your dick? What's going on? <laughs> Me, I'm just asking. <laughs> well, what's your name, mate? Charlie. Char Charlie? Yep. Named after what you sell. <laughs> what's that? It's Charlie Charlie, everyone. It's what's Charlie. Charlie? I'm going to talk about racism now, and this is a straight white man talking, so pay attention. <laughs> well, no. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, Black Lives Matter happened, and it raised a lot of very important questions for a lot of people. Questions like, am I racist? Well, if you're wondering, am I racist, here's what you do. Ask a close black friend, am I racist? And if you don't have a close black friend... <laughs> <laughs> here's a good rule of thumb. If you're a white person and you're going to say anything about race, it shouldn't involve your neck muscles. If you feel the urge before you speak, to look around conspiratorially. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Ah, oh, thank you, yes. Black Lives Matter happened, clearly a good thing, and then people that didn't really understand it came along and went, all lives matter. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's like someone saying, save the whale, and someone going, save all animals. <laughs> yes, but we don't really have a problem with people harpooning pigeons, you daft. Thank you, yes. I always found it weird. Black Lives Matter kind of felt like it was a, a request, like this is what we want, whereas All Lives Matter seemed like it was a philosophy or something like that, like more of a moral stance. Like they weren't even the same thing. Like, yeah, it was, uh, that was a, a, a very tedious period of time just with the... Um, disagreements with people about yeah that that exact thing that he just talked about where are the ginger people all right where's the gingers at hi roger well very nice to meet you roger that's uh is he I mean, that's super ginger, much where ginger is he? meets disability isn't it <laughs> then you can park where you fucking like with that coloring <laughs> roger you look as if you get sunburned checking the phone <laughs> Factor 50 for you just to look in a fucking fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this guy. What, what do you Show me, Roger. You? That's your wife. And you, what's, your, what's your name, the wife? Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Do you do anything else for charity or just fuck this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Is this guy? <gasps> oh, no. What a big-hearted lady. <laughs> big-hearted <I> lady. <laughs> it's as if they're an ugly woman at the back going, boo. <laughs> <laughs> What, sorry? Rude. Rude. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, sorry, when I said there's an ugly woman at the back, you went, hey, he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Rude. I mean... Yeah. What a weird thing to, like, speak up about. What's, what's your name, madam? Kelly. Kelly, I'm going to go soft on you, like every man that's ever seen you naked. Oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> no, I'm just saying, Kelly, you're what dimmer switches were invented for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. You know, you, Jimmy Carr has an interesting style. You, He just says, like, a statement and... He the, the the nature of the statement kind of leads you to think the joke is going to be about one thing, but then the joke is pulled out of a completely different word in that statement. It's it's pretty um, it's pretty amazing what he's able to do with uh, with words and just his his presentation and his performance. You ever shout out the wrong name during sex? That's embarrassing, isn't it? Especially if you're on your own. <laughs> Who's Dave? <laughs> Even know a Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Apologies, madam, I finished on you. <laughs> My girlfriend shouts daddy in the bedroom, which I think is a bit rude. Daddy? Because I mean, there's three of us here, not just you and your dad. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. Sparta. Masculine energy, okay. So just shout out if this applies to you, okay? Have you ever been ghosted by a girl? You sent her a message, you got nothing back, yeah? Yeah! You've had the opposite. You sent a girl a message, you got like 30 messages back, she's way too keen, yeah? Yeah! Have you ever had a girl cry during sex? Yeah! You're a racist. <laughs> that was, a, that was a aggressive yeah as well, that's not good. Delay D. <laughs> oh Remember the lady that was crying while you were fing her? That one. <laughs> that lady. Wow. How old are you, man? 18. 18 and out with mum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine Mate. the next five minutes is going to go great for you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, go on, let him have it. I went to see nine and a half weeks with my mum. <laughs> If you're not familiar, I mean, it's yeah. a softcore porn film from the 80s oh. starring Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger. So she kind of waited. I mean, the whole thing is a sex scene, but there's one sex scene where they're going at it like a barn door in a fucking gale. <laughs> <laughs> and she just nudged me, and so the whole cinema could hear. She just went, they'll sleep tonight. <laughs> Bless her. Oh, my God. Even at the age of 26... So just quickly, um, when I was like uh, eight or nine years old, whenever it came out, me and my mum accidentally went to see Event Horizon. Uh, yeah, we went to the drive-in, thought it was a like PG-rated space adventure movie with Dr. Alan Grant. We were mistaken and we left. Shortly after things turned full-blown horror in that movie. Because yeah, not a horror fan. <laughs> my mum walked in on me masturbating. I said, Mum, stop masturbating! <laughs> <laughs> So you're looking at me like mums don't masturbate. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Your mum. Just ladies on this, because men can be dreadful. Just ladies, favourite term, now or then, for your JJ. What do you call your JJ? Minky. <laughs> or minky. Minky? Cause, cause, because it's soft like a mink, not like a minky right whale. It's not fucking massive. <laughs> it has a, it's not a blowhole, is it? No, that's oh, fine. Any others? Flower. Flower? Have you got one of the squirty ones? They're fun. <laughs> this flower smells funny. <laughs> Any other? N nunny, because that's how much of it I'm getting. Nunny. <laughs> you don't think I'm ready for that jelly? I had one the other day. There was a lady in, I guess, her mid-60s in, in my audience, and I didn't get it at first. We were chatting about this, and she just went, she went, beetle bonnet. I went, what? She went, well, from my perspective, when I looked down, beetle bonnet. Like, oh, my God, like a like beetle. Bonnet. <laughs> and then her husband chipped in with gaping chasm of doom. <laughs> from his perspective. <laughs> Any other unusual ones? Princess Palace. Oh, it's wow. a palace. <laughs> Sounds roomy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there ballroom? <laughs> <laughs> I think the weirdest word I've ever heard for a vagina is from the TV show In Between Us. Um, I, 
one of the characters, Jay, I think, calls it a clunge. He's like, oh, there's going to be so much clunge at this party. And that was just the weirdest word I've ever heard. Uh, what do the Aussies call just just the C word, I guess? That's probably what we call it. I don't know. That's a, yeah, I'm just thinking if there's a specific Aussie term. I'll think about it. I look like a puppet without the string. Charlie, you chip in quite a lot, don't you? <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> Bill Cosby taught me that. That's a horrible thought. He's not going like what happens next. Scientists say Awful the largest sexual organ in the body is actually the mind. But that's only because those scientists haven't seen Charlie's mum's fanny. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank Charlie's mum for letting us use it this evening. It's a wonderful space. <laughs> no, 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 I go on very well with your mum. I never forget what your mum said to me. Let go of my ears. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think apps on our phones have changed everything. It's a generational change. It's true. You got a copy of the Yellow Pages, which was the old internet printed out. <laughs> <laughs> you went and you stood in the hallway of your house. Why the hallway? Because that's where, where the, the fucking phone, phone lived. <laughs> <laughs> you took a picture of your breakfast in 1990 <laughs> and showed it to everyone you knew. They would think you were a mental <laughs> That has not changed. <laughs> oh my god, yes. 100%. We used to have things called Tamagotchis. Remember Tamagotchis? Oh my god, wow. Little digital things that you would keep alive by giving them attention. We've still got them. They're now called Instagram models. <laughs> Tinder, you got the Tinder? But he's not wrong though. Like apps have really like taken out all of the, you know, like social skills building just experiences that people would have. I don't know what's going to happen when, uh, you know, people that have grown up in the mobile phone, smartphone era, you know, get to adulthood and have to actually start doing stuff for themselves. It's going to be a weird, weird time. Facebook, have you all got Facebook? Yeah, Facebook's all right. We've always had Facebook. The job of Facebook has always been done in our society, but it didn't used to be done by technology. The job of Facebook used to be done by your mums. I'll explain. Here's how Facebook worked in the 80s, right? You would let yourself in the house, you'd go in the kitchen, you'd make yourself a cup of tea, you'd sit down, your mum would rush in and go, do you remember that lady we used to live opposite? She just had a baby. <laughs> and you would think, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> Facebook. That's true. That is actually very true. Yeah. Man, he's he's so Netflix. Smart you got Netflix? Oh, Netflix. Now. Netflix used to be called Blockbuster Video. It did. So instead of sitting on the sofa arguing about what you were going to watch for the evening, you used to have to go to a special shop in the high street and have a fight in public. <laughs> And here's the bit that I think millennials have difficulty getting their head round. If you wanted to watch a good film, you couldn't because some of it was. <laughs> <laughs> You'd get home, everyone would be all excited. Oh, did you get the new Terminator film? No, some of the c***s watching that. <laughs> I got Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> we used to have to rewind films. <laughs> Suitcases didn't always have wheels. <laughs> I used to get tons of videos when I was a kid. Michael Jackson Moonwalker was my, my number one go-to. But uh, never got fined for not rewinding a video or anything like that. I think if you just didn't do it over and over again, they'd like put a note on your file and then they'd speak to you when you went in there. Because yeah, guess what? Back in those days, you'd have to walk in and they could speak to you and be like, hey man, rewind your things. And you had to actually own up to what you did. So yeah, I, I, I follow. If you were late returning a film. Oh man. Heaven Ooh. for fend. <laughs> Ransom note turned up. <laughs> £12 for the safe return of Turner and Hooch. 
if you were late returning it to Blockbusters three times, they banned you from the shop. <laughs> they didn't need your business. Well, it turns out they fucking did. They went bust, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> A young woman that lives opposite me has just started her own webcam business. She'd be thrilled when she finds out. <laughs> ah, no! Dude. Hotel sex is better than sex at home, isn't it? You make noise, you can make mess, your wife's not there. Better. That's <laughs> where <laughs> so he just rattles off these one lines. Hi, what, what's your name? Aisha. Aisha. Hi, Aisha. And are you, do you mind me asking, are you a gold star lesbian? I guess so. Are you not familiar with the terminology? You, so, Aisha, I'll, I'll, uh, so a gold star lesbian is a lady that has, how can I put this politely, has never had a vitamin D injection. Right. Whereas you get other girls that are try before you're bi, bi now, gay later. <laughs> they give the D a go, but it's not for them. I don't like it, it's pointy and it's fat at me. <laughs> I had sex with a lesbian once. Wow, she is now. Well, the one, I, uh, there was a nurse in. A couple of months ago, right? So I'm chatting away. I said, what's the weirdest thing? She said a guy walked in with an unbroken light bulb up there. Walked in, unbroken. <laughs> Makes you proud to be British. <laughs> a light bulb. Oh. Imagine the x-ray. It must have looked like someone's arsehole had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Any other good ones? Why? In any world with that A fountain happen. pen in his penis. Bro, how bored do you have to be to learn that you can do that? What? How long ago was this, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that he keeps coming back to this poor kid. Obviously, killing yourself is the last thing you should do. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Come on. that. You're gonna make me laugh at a joke There's about things that. You... Right, let's get to the career ender, shall we? Oh no. I've written some potentially career ending jokes. Yeah, I think we all, we all have come to terms with the fact. He's had some I good get cancelled in the next couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah chances are. <laughs> Here's the good news. <laughs> oh my god, alright. Before he gets into this, yeah, I would be really worried if I was like Jimmy Carr or Frankie Boyle or even like, you know, Dave Chappelle, you know, anybody that make, does this kind of like shocking kind of humor, like one day the, they're going to come for you and it's going to suck. So hopefully comedians have managed to forge their path through this sea of, you know, all these social justice nonsense and overreactions to things. Not that everything's an overreaction, but a lot of it is. I'm going down swinging. All right, Jimmy. When I give my opinion on gender or race issues, people say, well, it's easy for you to say as a straight white man, but when I give my opinion as a gay Chinese lady, <laughs> they don't like the accent I do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I love accents. I love accents. I don't like it when people tell me their kid is adopted. What difference does it make? It's your kid, whether it's biologically yours or a rescue. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I hate it when coat hangers get all tangled up and you can't use them. So we're keeping the baby. <laughs> well, that's an unfortunate response from some of you. Because that joke's only there to warm me up for this one. Oh, no. In Alabama, in America, they've made it effectively impossible to get an abortion, even if you get raped. That is so fucked up. Think about that. You serve your time, you get out, you've got to pay child support. Nightmare. <laughs> oh, no. I was in Amsterdam. This story is reassuringly going exactly where you think it's going. All right, who did you have so sex with? I was in Amsterdam today? on tour and I walked from my venue to the hotel across town through the middle of the red light district. And as I walked by, she sort of brazenly went, are you interested? Oh, I went, I actually don't have to pay for sex. I'm a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gross. Can I end my career in eight words? What do you think? Go on. I, I feel like he's been warming up. I've, I've got faith that the last one's going to be good. This is the risk of like doing something like you're about to hear something amazing. You get the audience's uh, hopes up and their expectations. It's a ballsy um, strategy. All right, Jimmy. Nice <laughs> Let's count them off. 
you can prevent any rape, just say yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you look as if you really don't want to be laughing at that joke. <laughs> Somewhat ironically, I'm forcing you. <laughs> when life is shit, that's when you need a laugh. When things are terrible in your that life, is true. you need a laugh. And actually, we've got the best sense of humour. It's best to have a very dark sense of humour, right? I feel sorry for the people that get offended. I feel sorry for the people that can't laugh at dark shit. Because when their life is terrible, they've just got to f***ing white knuckle it. <laughs> That's a good point. At least we get to f***ing giggle. Which is a long, roundabout way of saying, I did a gig in a hospice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about death and cancer now, but don't worry, I'm very funny. Christ. It's 200 dying people in the audience, and we put on a little comedy show in the afternoon. It's great. No one talked about death and cancer in a room full of death and cancer. And I thought it was weird, and I was chatting oh, to a friend man. at the back of the room. I said, it's weird no one's mentioned what's going on in the room. He said, it is weird. You should mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I went, yeah, yeah, no, I should, yeah, 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 yeah with some degree of trepidation, in front of 200 people dying of cancer. Man. I said, come on, we haven't got much time. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and this dark, ominous presence was being taken down and laughed at. And I was really enthused and it felt really empowering. And That's cool I got carried true. away and I took it too far. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Well, no, there well, of course I he did. I followed up with, is anyone here from last year? I finished with a couple of cancer jokes, my favourite cancer jokes. Yeah. Don't look <laughs> at me like you favorites. think, he doesn't have favourite cancer jokes, of course I <laughs> do. <laughs> my father died. Really? What was it? The big C. Cancer. No, he drowned. <laughs> the big C. <laughs> I think that was a fantastic stand-up set. It's a wild time. The world is changing so quickly. I feel like the world has changed almost infinitely since the last time Jimmy Carr did a stand-up comedy special. Um, obviously all the COVID stuff to talk about, like at the very least, like he touched on a lot of subjects here. I don't think he did a It's a career killer. I don't think he said anything that over the top. I mean, he did, but... He found a way to do it in a way that was treated as a joke and hopefully nobody takes it seriously and nobody's getting upset about what he says because Jimmy Carr is a brilliant comedian and the way he pokes fun at... You know, he made a good point there. He's, he's never really been um, like much of a racial kind of comedian or, or overly... Uh, specifically attacky towards any group of people. It's always been about like people that have things in common, but not necessarily like, you know, biologically or genetically or whatever like that, but just experiences that people can share and, and just finding a way to be relatable on these ridiculous topics. And I think Jimmy Carr did a fantastic job of walking that line here. You look at some of his oldest stand-up sets, they might be a little bit more, you know, outrageous, but it's a wild time, 2021, 2022, whatever it's going to be soon. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting time for comedy coming up um, with how far a comedian's going to be able to push humor because people do get upset. And I, th I don't think people getting upset is a good thing, but I do think that people having the right to point at somebody who is, you know, being inappropriate. And I mean, you look at Dave Chappelle, for example. Dave Chappelle is funny before anything racially related like and that's the most important thing if you can be funny you can say things that are inappropriate but you have to be funny you don't get to be inappropriate and then that's funny that's just being that's just where you're you know reinforcing shitty stereotypes and shitty things like that there needs to be humor there needs to be a joke and jimmy carr is one of the best out there so i had a great time with this one let me know in the comments what your favorite joke on this was Hey, oh, he's got so many, like he whips through them so fast. I I can't even think of what my favorite one was. I'll have to mull that one over and uh, get back to you guys in the comments. But as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.